This bathroom is in dire need of a renovation. As you can see, there's some major issues with some water damage on the tile. It's blue and there's just already, I could tell there's gonna be a lot of things when I uncover all of this that we're gonna have some issues. So number one, this is obviously the main reason I was called in because the tile is basically falling off the wall and there's leakage going into the basement. Um, this is an old cast iron tub. This house was built in like the 60s. So this is one thing I noticed when I first came in here is that this is a concrete floor. So a lot of the older homes, they used to, instead of having any type of cement board or plywood, they would actually just like pour a floor out of concrete in the bathroom to set tile over. So it's probably about an inch and a half to two inches thick. And um, we're gonna remet, we're gonna remove all that because you don't want to tile over this. It's just gonna make the transition at the doorway way too large. So we're gonna tear this out. We're gonna uncover all the plumbing and uh, make sure that everything's sound before we build the new bathroom on top of this. But a couple other things that I noticed in this bathroom that uh, I didn't like is this big ledger behind the vanity. So there's like a what a five inch bump out. I'm not exactly sure why this was bumped out, but once we remove the vanity, we'll uncover it. I have a feeling it has something to do with the plumbing, but we're going to remove this. And uh, so I know that there's going to be additional work with the plumbing there. You got this little vent fan, most likely is not working very properly. Um, we do have plaster walls or well, half and half, probably drywall on this side. Looks like plaster over here. But when you come into a bathroom where you have all these patches like this, it's not worth saving. You're going to spend so much more time trying to make this smooth and looking good. You're better off just to tear it out and put a couple new sheets of drywall in. Um, we're going to be adding a light above the shower because we only have one light above the vanity. So that's going to make it a lot nicer. And what we're, the main priority is, is to convert this tub into a shower. So this will be sliding glass doors and uh, be a lot more user friendly. Another thing that I noticed that I didn't like is number one, the outlet was just floating in the middle of nowhere here. I mean, we're 18 inches off the top of the cabinet. Uh, it's very unflattering to have an outlet sitting here like this. So we're gonna move this outlet. We're gonna get a better light fixture and then we're gonna end up putting in three switches. So we have one for above our vanity, one for above our shower, and then one for the vent fan. So this is just one tutorial out of 130 tutorials I have in my ultimate curbless shower course. And if you're a contractor planning on doing this for a client, this is going to be really beneficial to you because I really get into the weeds on the evaluation of a project like this and give you actual estimates in the contracts that I gave the clients. So you can compare to what I've been doing to what you're doing and make sure that you're charging enough to do something like this. And if you are a DIYer, this is going to even be more important to you because I have checklists that are going to keep you prepared and in each tutorial has really defined information about each part of the project and then has helpful links and a lot of other information and then if you have any questions you can always leave a comment below any of my tutorials and I'm more than willing to help you out so definitely check out all of my courses you can get them all bundled into one membership the DIY geek membership this is just a one payment process no uh, no further fear to your fees and you'll have lifetime access to it so I hope to help you out with your bathroom thanks so much